All right, in this video tutorial, we're going to walk through all of the different types of CSS selectors and look at examples of how each of those work. Now, I have set up here a basic uh, HTML page. It's similar to the ones we worked on in our previous video tutorials. So I have this HTML file, and I also have a CSS sheet. And I'll open up this HTML file inside of the web browser. Um, right now, this HTML file is simply made up of two divs, and each one of these divs has a paragraph of text. If I jump back over here to my web editor, you can see that the HTML file is just a div with a paragraph and a div with a paragraph. We're going to use this basis to illustrate how these CSS selectors work. Now the majority of the work we're going to be doing is inside of the style sheet. So I'm going to jump back over here to my style sheet. Right now it's just empty. And let's start out with the, the, sele the selector that we've already looked at before, which is a tag selector. Now tag selectors are simply referenced by their name. So P is a tag based selector and this is going to affect the paragraph tag. So if I just come in here and say color colon red semicolon, so that's the property and the value. Remember the semicolon and then, or the colon and then the semicolon at the end. Now if I save this and jump over to my web browser and refresh command R on a Mac or F5 on a PC, you can see those paragraphs do in fact turn red and both of the paragraphs are affected. So if I look back here at my HTML, the way that tag-based selectors work is it's any paragraph within this HTML page will have those CSS rules applied. So the tag-based selector is fairly easy to work with. If I want to affect the header one, I would just say header one. But again, this will affect all of those header ones on a page. So the question comes, well, what if I want to have one paragraph red and the other paragraph green? How can I do that? And the easy answer to that question is through classes and IDs. So we're going to look at each of those selectors next. Now, we'll start off with the ID selector. And if you remember back to the PowerPoint slide, ID selectors um, have the ID equals and then ID name. So this is an HTML attribute that you add on the tag itself. And the ID name can actually be whatever you want. I could call this Andrew. I could call this blah. You just can't have spaces. So I can't say Andrew space something. That space will actually break it. They also cannot start with num uh, numericals. So you can't say one Andrew or nine Andrew. You can actually terminate with a number. So I can actually say Andrew nine. But I recommend, because you can't start with them, just avoid them all together, and then you don't have to worry about remembering that. So just do um, A through Z, and you can do, um, di or rather, you can do hyphens, or I can also do underscores. So those are all valid ID names. So let's take an, a sample here. I'm just going to call this ID equals paragraph top. This is called camel casing. I could do a dash there. So this is the top paragraph. And I'm going to copy this ID name and jump back to my CSS style sheet. And remember in the CSS, to reference an ID, we use the pound sign. So it's pound. And then you simply type out the name of that ID that you gave your HTML tag. Open and close your curly brace. And let's say color is blue. Okay, so we'll save that. And we'll jump back here and refresh. And now nothing is actually happening here. So that tells me I have an error, an error because this should in fact turn blue, this second paragraph or that top paragraph. So, and the error is that I have not saved it. You'll see this little circle here. I forgot to save my HTML document. So I need to save both of these. When you're working with CSS and HTML, it's often you have to remember to save the CSS and save the HTML when you make those changes. So I've just saved both. Now I'll jump back here and do Command R to refresh again. And now it does in fact turn blue. Now here's an interesting conundrum that you'll often find yourself in with CSS. I have conflicting rules here. This top rule is saying turn all paragraphs red. And now this second CSS rule is saying turn this specific ID blue. And that specific ID just so happens to be on a paragraph. So this is trying to be turned red and blue. And, and, and it in fact turned blue. And the reason why is because of what we call CSS specificity. 
Now CSS specificity is kind of an advanced topic and it's a little bit outside of the scope of this initial video tutorial, but a quick rundown of specificity is that IDs are more specific than tag-based selectors. So this will always trump a general tag-based selector because it's a more specific type of CSS selector. And uh, you can look up online and several resources, resources, just type in CSS specificity and you'll get a whole bunch of resources to see exactly which types of selectors override other types of selectors. All right, now we've looked at the ID selector. Let's come down to this second paragraph and let's add a class. So I'll say class equals, I'm just going to type something else. And again, these class names are the same thing. They can, I can make these up. They can be whatever I want. So let's come back to our style sheet here and I'll do a new rule. Classes in CSS start with a period. So I'll say period something else and I'll open and close the curly braces. And I'll come in here and say color yellow. So actually let's do green so we can see it a little bit better on our screen. We'll save and come back and refresh our browser window. And I made the same mistake. I did not save my HTML page, so I need to save that. Then come back and refresh. And now you can see that second paragraph does in fact turn green. Now I have three conflicting rules. This one says turn them both red. This says turn the top one blue. This one says turn the bottom one green. And the reason why it does in fact turn green is because of that idea of specificity. Classes are also more specific, specific than general paragraphs. That's a hard word to say. And IDs are more specific than classes. So that's kind of a general hierarchy there. Uh, that's a, a quick intro into the CSS selectors. And in the next video tutorial, we're going to look at the rest.